Welcome back to Enzyme Regulation, Control of Enzyme Activity. This time, we will discuss how covalent modification of enzymes can be used to regulate their activity. To get the most out of the videos, I recommend watching them in order. This is a reminder that this presentation is Dr. Johnson's intellectual property. Covalent modification of amino acid residues most often involves phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. Other types of covalent modification include acetylation, adenylation, myristoylation, phosphorylation, carboxylation, sulfation, and ubiquitination. These are used to make the enzyme more or less active in response to signals within the cell and to external signals, such as from hormones. Phosphorylation most often occurs on serine, threonine, and tyrosine, and is readily removed without affecting the overall integrity of the enzyme. The reaction, however, is not reversible. A different phosphate donor and acceptor are required for the addition and removal of the phosphate. Consequently, different enzymes have evolved to catalyze these opposing reactions. Kinases transfer a phosphate from ATP and phosphatases use water to hydrolyze the phosphate from the enzyme. In the example here, phosphorylation has changed the catalytically active form of the enzyme into a catalytically inactive form. However, this is not universally the case. Some enzymes are less active when phosphorylated and others are more active. There is usually some logic behind this. Phosphorylation is thought to change the equilibrium between the taut and relaxed conformers. Here is an example with glycogen phosphorylase that illustrates the coordinated effects of allosteric regulation, phosphorylation, and a regulatory cascade stemming from hormonal signals that initiates the cellular response. The more active form of this enzyme, phosphorylase A, has specific residues phosphorylated. It is converted to the inactive form, phosphorylase B, by dephosphorylation, catalyzed by phosphoprotein phosphatase. Phosphorylase B can be converted back into phosphorylase A by phosphorylase kinase catalyzed phosphorylation. The activity of both phosphorylase A and B can be modulated by allosteric effectors which will activate or inhibit it. The allosteric effectors bind to separate sites on the enzyme from the substrate and the phosphorylation sites. If you look further out from this enzyme, you will see that phosphorylase kinase and phosphoprotein phosphatase are themselves regulated by phosphorylation and dephosphorylation, ultimately stemming from the effects of the hormones glucagon, adrenaline, and insulin binding to cell surface receptors. Binding of glucagon in the liver and adrenaline in muscle result in the intracellular increase in cyclic AMP concentration. The effects of insulin binding are mediated in other ways. Allosteric and covalent modifications take effect quickly, but last only a short period of time. To make longer lasting changes, other approaches are required. So next time, we'll turn our attention to ways in which the amount of enzyme available can be modified. 